So you can bake your potatoes in the oven. You can put them in the microwave. You can do it in the, uh, well, the way I've done mine is I've done mine in my Instant Pot. And they turn out really good every time. So you just do your baked potatoes how you want to. i done, um, I bought a bag of russet potatoes. And these were the big bacon potatoes. And I think these are probably about five inches long, most of them. And that's pretty much the size that you want to start with. Uh, some of them may be just a little bit smaller in, uh, maybe, you know, not as fat, but they're still at least five inches long. So that's what you want to start with. I think I've got, I think this is 10 pounds of potatoes. I can't remember now. But anyways, uh, just do however many that you need to do for your family. And of course, you're going to cut them in half. So you're going to be able to double whatever you think you're going to need. And all you're going to do is bake your potatoes till they're good and tender and soft inside. Like I said, I've done mine in the Instant Pot. So just do it any way you want to. Uh, and I've already got these done. And what you want to do, it's really easier to, to get your uh, potato out when it's still warm. You don't want it so hot you can't, you can't hold it. You want it, you know, cool enough you can hold that potato, but you still want it. It just seems to scoop out better. And this one's gotten cold on me. But uh, I went ahead and done all these because y'all need to watch me do all these potatoes. But you just want to take your potato, and I've just got a scoop here, and you do it any way you want to. But you just want to be careful and not get all the way to the skin. You want to leave an outer layer of your potato. So I've just been scooping the potato out, trying not to get down to the skin. And I have messed a few up, believe me. But you know, that's okay, because they still eat. They still taste good, and they still eat. So I'm just being real careful not to get down to the skin and pulling that out and leaving an, an inner layer of the potato inside the skin. Because if you don't, your skin, you're not going to have nothing left. You're not going to have anything to hold your potato stuff in there so if you mess it up like I did right there and tear it up it's okay but I've got them all done here and I got my potatoes in here and what I'm going to do is I'm fixing to I'm going to stick all these potatoes in the microwave I want to go ahead and heat them up again because I'm going to put some more milk and I'm going to put some butter in there and all that's and I'm going to mash it up so to, to mash it up and get it really uh, like I like it, I'm going to have to warm my potatoes back up. So let me get these in the microwave. And then we'll be back and put our potatoes together. I've heated my potatoes back up right here in the bowl, and I've warmed me up some milk. Um, I've got a whole cup here, but I'm only going to pour half a cup for right now, and then I'm going to mash on it. I've got a half a cup of butter. Just like you're making mashed taters. I've got a daughter-in-law that... Um, she does a prime rib usually on uh, Christmas Eve. And I'm telling you, she does a wonderful job on it. And uh, she's made twice baked potatoes before with prime rib, and it's so good. I'm telling you. I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. you want to if you've got people that's not too finicky that's going to be eating you put you a little bit of garlic maybe some roasted garlic would be good 
but we always had to consider, you know, when you're feeding a bunch of people, you know, their likes and stuff and what they probably don't like. Um, you can put chopped up green onions in this, but I'm going to be using chives because my family don't care for green onions, except for probably me and Mr. Brown. But they do like a little bit of chives. Now, I failed to tell you a while ago, but I went ahead and counted, and I, I had 10 russet potatoes is what I ended up with, cut in half, 10 of them, and they're about 5 inches long. And this recipe is going to be for 10 5-inch russet potatoes. And I'll put that down in the description box, how many potatoes I used for this recipe. I'm going to put me a little bit more milk. Now, some of y'all, um, I don't know if y'all watching this on TV or what, but uh, a lot of y'all are new to our channel. We want to thank y'all so much for coming over and watching us. It really blesses us. And um, y'all are having trouble finding our information. Now, on my phone and on my computer, if you'll go down to the right hand side, just down below the video, just a little bit, you'll see two little arrows. And if you click on them, the box, the description box will come down and it'll give you all my information, my recipe for that day, uh, my Amazon shop. It will give you information on my cookbook and all that stuff. So I'm going to keep mashing on these. I got my oven heated to 350 because I'm going to cook one up so y'all can see what it looks like being cooked. We'll taste it. But the rest of them we're going to freeze and have them ready for next week. Anything that you can do ahead just makes life so much easier. Now, I'm not going to be adding sour cream or yogurt or anything to this. That will be on the, you know, set out the day of. And if somebody wants sour cream on their twice baked potato, they can just put it on there. But I've got some of my grandkids. They love Nanny's dressing. And they want mashed potatoes with the dressing. But i got some that like twice baked potatoes, so... We'll have both. But this is something that I think for my virtual YouTube Thanksgiving dinner, I think they're going to enjoy it too. And I think we're getting there. Got a drop of milk left. And you can use a a hand mixer to do this. I just, I've always just used my potato masher. Okay. Now the only thing we have left to do, now usually what you'd want to do is taste this at this point to see if it does need uh, maybe a little bit of more salt or pepper. Like I said, you can put a little garlic in it. It might need a little bit more salt, but not much. Of course, I use real butter. You can use salted or unsalted, whichever you want. Now, I've got about, um, I think I ended up with 10, 10 slices of bacon that I, I cooked up. I've got a good cup of shredded cheese. Use whatever kind of cheese you want. And then I've got my chives. Now, I didn't have as many chives as I wanted to use. I wanted at least half a cup. And I think I had just a little less than half a cup. But this is going to work. I may pick some more up and we can put some on it as they cook. Or as they come out of the oven. But uh, 
I've got some more shredded cheese right here that's going to go on top of it before we wrap them up and freeze them. So our bacon, our chives, and our cheese is going in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this into the potatoes. You know, we have so much to be thankful for. We're so thankful that the good Lord has given us the ability to work, to provide for our families. To be able to be sustainable and, and uh, grow gardens and take care of our animals and be able to hunt and fish so we can feed our families. I'm so thankful that where I'm at and where I live now I can go to church with my church family and we can worship without fear. So blessed. So I'm just folding all that bacon and cheese and you can see how you can see all that bacon in there. I think I'm getting it mixed up pretty good. Now at this point, some people will put sour cream in there, but I don't like putting sour cream in there. I like to wait and serve it as the side. So I'm going to get a clean spoon or fork, whichever. Grab me a fork. I'm going to taste it again. That is good. I think I would like some roasted garlic in it, but add a little bit more salt and pepper. Like I said, if this was just for me, Mr. Brown, I could put different seasonings in it, but for everybody else, I'm going to be careful. Okay. That's all there is to that. Now we're going to scoop it up and put it in our potato skins that we left over here. And then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to start filling these up. I'm just going to scoop me some. Put it here in the potato skin. And you can mound it up. Put as much as you want in there, as long as you have enough to go around. And just keep doing that. And this one, you can see that I went down to the skin, so I kind of messed up on that one. But we're just going to fill it full neck like I didn't do it. Green onions are really good in these, too, but there's just so many people that cannot eat green onions. They really don't settle with me much anymore, and I, I've always loved them. You know, this is going to be really good with all those beautiful dishes that the other channels have made. You got Miss Renee living the good life, Grammy Nene. She's the one that started this. And I'm so glad she did. So this is going to be good with her turkey she cooked in the roaster. And her mashed potatoes. It's good to always have different, several different sides. Because you got people that, because I can tell you, I go through for the sides really quick. Especially the cold pastas and stuff. You got Greg with Greg's Kitchen. He's bringing a sweet onion casserole. 
and I know it's really going to be good. It just even sounds good. You got Miss Gay Jordan from Apron Strings. She's bringing a dessert. She is bringing a pumpkin crunch cake, and it looks so good. She's a really, really sweet lady from around, well, kind of around my neck of the woods, Texas. Kind of got that one a little bit full, but that's okay. Then you got Sharon with Threshold Homestead. She made homemade mac and cheese, and who don't like a good homemade mac and cheese? Wonderful side dish to take anywhere. We got Leslie from the farm, uh, Farmer's Pastures Wife. She is so nice, and her husband is too. Really, really hardworking, nice people. And she's make she made a punch and a really nice autumn salad. You got Miss Vicky from Vicky's Country Home. Her husband is Italian, so she she knows quite a bit about Italian cooking and recipes, and she made an Italian sausage uh, dressing, and I want to try that. If I don't, if I'm not able to do it this Thanksgiving, I'm going to try it at some point because it looked and sounds so good. You got Miss Darlene from Super at 60. And she made a apple butter maple syrup pumpkin pie. Now that just sounds delicious just saying it. Really nice lady. Good cook. We got Miss Katie from Heritage Ways. She made an oyster dressing, which I had never even heard of, but it looked really good. Um, I've never ate oysters in my life that I remember, but it sure sounds good. And then she made something that a lot of people wouldn't think of. She made mashed turnips. Instead of mashed potatoes, she made mashed turnips for a side dish. And uh, I just think that's a wonderful idea. Um, I've never had mashed turnips. Well, I take that back. My grandma used to cook turnips, and um, she wouldn't mash them up, but I would, just so I'd eat them. I'd put a few on my plate just to make her happy, and I'd season it up and kind of mash it around on my plate and eat them. But mashed turnips, that's a really good idea. That'd be a, a new side dish for somebody to try if you like turnips. And if your family likes turnips. So I'm going to finish filling these up. When we come back, we're going to top them with cheese. We're going to cook one of them. And then we're going to wrap the rest up to have ready for later on. And we got all of our cheese on top of our potatoes. And I like them really cheesy, so you can tell that I, I probably ended up between the cheese that I put in the potatoes and on top, I'm thinking I used probably about three cups of cheese. Um, this one over here I'm going to put in the oven. These right here. Now when I put the cheese on here, I've been kind of pressing it down since these are the ones that I'm going to wrap up and put in the freezer. So I got my oven heated at 350. We're going to stick this one in there, and we're going to cook it till the potato is warm through and through, and the cheese is melted on top. It shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes. Okay, here it is, out of the oven. 
it was a good 15 minutes to make sure that it was good and warm all the way down and the cheese was good and melted. Now we're going to taste it. I put a little bit of sour cream on there. And if you want to, you know, as you get them out, you put your little sour cream and some chives on top on a few of them because I'm sure there's some of your guests that might like it that way. Good stuff. You know, this is a good idea to have in your freezer because you can take kind of, however many you want out. You can take out and um, say it's just Mr. me and Mr. Brown and we're having uh, something like grilled chicken or something and we want a twice-baked potato. I can go in the freezer the day before and just take out two out of the bag, put them in the refrigerator and let them thaw out. And the next day, I'll just put them in the oven for about 15-20 minutes and we've got a twice baked potato about that quick. So it's a good thing. Tastes good too. Good side dish. Easy and good. So y'all see how easy that was. Now you can see I've got Every one of my little potatoes, I've got them wrapped up, and I just used some press and seal, that's all I've used. And now I'm just going to put them in a, a large freezer bag. And I'll put them in the freezer, and I won't stack them until they're frozen because they're kind of mush them down if you try to stack them right now. I'll probably get one more in there. And there you go. There's your twice baked potatoes ready for the freezer and ready for your oven and ready for your table. So I hope y'all like this recipe. I enjoy doing it. And uh, you know this is such a good thing just to have in your freezer anytime really. So, but I'm really glad that we've done this uh, series of our YouTube Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. I really love and care about all these people. I'm so thankful for our Lord, number one. I'm thankful for my husband. Um, at the age of 14, he brought me to the Lord, and I thank him very much for that. I'm so thankful for my children, my grandchildren. I'm very thankful for all my friends, my subscribers, all of y'all that just uh, support me, subscribe to my channel, support me, and Mr. Brown say such kind things to us you send us so many uh, from the heart gifts and cards and letters and uh, you buy my cookbooks and just so many things that really humbles us and we're just so thankful for y'all so I'm gonna have one more video hopefully and it's gonna be a dessert and I'm hoping to have it up Saturday and then from that point on, we'll just be cooking away or just doing whatever we do on the homestead. So y'all have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. And hopefully I'll see you Saturday again. So God bless everybody. We love y'all.